ओम ज्ञान तिमीरांधस्यानाशनाकया चक्षुरमित श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूपाखदाइम ददा स्वापदातिक वंदेहम श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश सागर जाता साधना रघुनाथा तम सजीव साधुत सवधुत परिजना कृष्ण चैतन्य सहगणा ललिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्तुते गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशा कल्पा तरिभ्यश्चा कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैता कथाकर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगुम लंगायते गिरे यत्कृपा तम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीनतारिण परमाधव श्री चैतन्यश्वर नम ओं विष्णुपारा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे पंचतत्वत्मक कृष्ण भक्त स्वूपक भक्ता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्ता शक्ति ओके लास्ट वीक वी डिस्कस्ड ऑन द ग्लो नवदीप धाम टुडे वील डिस्कस ऑन अंतर द्वीप सो देर आर लाइक नवद्वीप नव मीन्स नाइन नवद्वीप मीन्स नाइन आईलैंड एज यू सी इन द मैप दिस इज हाउ इट इट लुक्स टूडे देर इज अंतर द्वीप सीमांत द्वीप रुद्र द्वीप मोरा डुमा द्वीप जहानू द्वीप ऋतु द्वीप कोला द्वीप मध्य द्वीप एंड गोदुम द्वीप एंड देर आर टू रिवर्स भागीरथी एंड झालंगी दे बोथ आर डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ गंगा दे सेपरेट सो ऑल ऑफ अस विल बी स्टेइंग इन अंतर द्वीप एंड अंतर द्वीप 
is called Mayapur. Within Antarjit, we will see the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. That area is called Mayapur. <clears throat> In order to go, as you see in the map, if we have to go to Simantadri, just the auto will take us. And we will be discussing Simantadri also later. But if we have to go to um, Godrum Dweep, Godrum Dweep, as you see, from Antar Dweep, we take a boat to Godrum Dweep. And that's how we go to the house of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, which is in Godrum Dweep. Then Kola Dweep is where Jagannath Babaji Maharaj would stay. So again, we have to cross the river by a boat. Um, <clears throat> then Kola Dweep is where our train station would be, um, which is uh, um, like the main downtown area. So we have to cross the river to go to Antar Dweep. Okay. And last week we discussed these different nine dweeps. They correspond to different places in Braja. Antar dweep corresponds to Gokul Mahavan because obvious reason Lord Krishna in Gokul Mahavan, his childhood pastimes and Nimai's childhood pastimes in Antar dweep. And all these nine islands, they also correspond to the nine forms of devotional service. Okay. So this is the introduction. Um, now, uh, pranam, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, these nine islands, is it um, referred somewhere that you know, the replica of Golok there? or Yeah, they are all mentioned in uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur book, Prabhuji. Basically, it was described by Nityanda Prabhu to Jiva Goswami. And everything we are discussing is how Nita explained to Jiva Goswami. Okay. Where does Eka Chakra falls, Prabhuji? Oh, this is that is far away from this Navadi Prabhu. It's oh, yeah. four and a half hours away. Yeah, four and a half hours. All right. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm. Ritu Dweep, as you see here, corresponds to Radha Kund. So in that way, Godurum Dweep, for example, um, I think it corresponds to chanting, Antar Dweep hearing. We can double check on that. <clears throat> it will come. So we will be yeah, we will be going through all the nine islands first. So we get some idea of what all places are there. But we probably won't be visiting all of them in our three days trip. But we can mentally visit at least and prepare ourselves. Okay. Then Antardweep. Um, most of the Childhood pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu happened here in Antar Dweep. It is also compared to the whole of the lotus surrounded by eight petals. Mm. Then it is also called Atopur Gram, another name for Antar Dweep. Four headed Brahma performed austerities at Atopur Gram to become free from the offense he committed during Krishna's pastimes. Of stealing the cowherd boys and calves. Feeling deeply remorseful and having contemplated Sriman Mahaprabhu's coming pastimes and his munificence, he worshipped the Lord at this place. So, just like Indra came, and Indra also worshipped after uh, Vitsurabhi because he was repentant. Brahma also, after stealing the cowherd boys, I mean, whom he stole, he actually stole Madhumangal, Subal, Sridama, all. Beautiful cowherd boys of Krishna and all the cows of Krishna were eternally associated. So he was a really lamenting heart. And knowing, um, because the Lord reveals to demigods, knowing that the Lord will come um, in the Kali Yuga um, as Sriman Mahaprabhu. So he came to perform penance here. Satisfied with Lord Brahma's worship, Sriman Mahaprabhu appeared before him. Brahmaji begged forgiveness for his offense and asked for a boon. When you exhibit your pastimes in this world, please arrange for me to take birth in a low-class family. And thus in a mood of humility and wretchedness, fulfill your innermost desire with my service. Please allow me to take birth uh, when you appear. 
It is said that when Krishna came, Krishna told all the demigods to take birth along with him as Yadus. And most of the demigods took birth, but Brahma did not take birth that time. Brahma was very remorseful. And when Mahaprabhu came, then Brahma in order to repent for his mistake and also for doing that act of Brahma, Brahma Vimohan Lila, he begged Chitanya Mahaprabhu to take birth in a low-class family. And that's how he came as Shilahari Das Thakur. <clears throat> Maha, Shriman Mahaprabhu then granted Lord Brahma his boon, saying, you will take birth in a Muslim family and serve me by preaching and loudly chanting the holy names of Hari. I will appear in this form of Gauranga. This is Mahaprabhu declaring to Brahmaji. I will appear in this form of Gauranga, having accepted the sentiment and bodily luster of my beloved Radha for the purpose of fulfilling my three special internal reasons. Hence, this island dweep became known as Antar Dweep because it is here that the role revealed his internal Antar sentiments to Brahma. That's where it got the name Antar Dweep. Antar means internal. Internal reasons was revealed by Lord Chaitanya, which was later on mentioned by Lord Chaitanya to Sarup Damodar Goswami and Sarup Damodar Goswami wrote in his book, which Raghuranda Goswami again spoke on that and Krishna's Kavirat Goswami wrote them in the first chapter of Adi Lila as why Mahaprabhu appeared. Uh, three internal and three external reasons. <clears throat> Antar Dweep's central point, the Maha Yoga Peet, is the appearance place of the Lord and is also known as Mayapur. That area is known as Mayapur, but generally we call our Iskon temple also as uh, Mayapur. Or when we say Shri Mayapur Dham, it basically refers to Antar Dweep and at the core of Antar Dweep to the birthplace of Nimai. And within the whole uh, of Antar Dweep, the central point is where Mahaprabhu actually appeared. Mahayoga Peet. Okay, then um, first we will go to the temple where Mahaprabhu appeared and this these are the deities there. There is Sachi Mata, there is Jagannath Mishra holding baby Nimai and this is called Sachi Devi's delivery room where Nimai's umbilical cord was cut. Here under the neem tree, baby Nimai, so just outside of this there is a neem tree. So here under the neem tree, baby Nimai took birth from the womb of Mother Sachi. The original tree has since departed from this world. A new tree has grown in the same place. <clears throat> okay. Then as you see, this is a little bit unclear. <clears throat> but um, can you see my mouse? Yes, no, it's probably. Okay. Yes, but... probably. Yeah, okay. So this whole area is Antardweep, this area. Um, <clears throat> and this is Yoga Peet. This is what we are discussing. Our Iskon temple is somewhere here. And this is where is Prabhupada Ghat, right here. Usually devotees take bath and Ganges here. Then this is where we come, like this is the Iskon temple. So we come almost to this point to take a boat. And if we take a boat from here to here, then we enter into this area, which is Godrun Dweep. If we take a boat from here to here, then we enter into area which is Kola Dweep. These are the three places where we be, where we will be visiting. Then this is our um, Iskon Temple. From here, we can take an auto and go to Yoga Peet. <clears throat> and from there, the auto further goes, and then there are these places up till Chan Kazi's house. So we will be discussing all these four places today. This Bhagirati Ganga. So first we go to Madhai Ghat. And as we go there, um, I know the name is, this is uh, Nagariya Ghat. This is Ganga Ghat. This even I forgot. We will see. And this is Madhai Ghat. So let's see. So within the Yoga Peet, um, as some of you see, this is the neem, this is the neem tree, the new neem tree. Then this is 
the structure you see here is the delivery room of Jagannath Mishra and uh, Sachi Devi. Okay, just behind the neem tree, there is um, Chetrapal Shiva, or he is also called by the name Gopeshwar Mahadev. Um, then this is a temple just like uh, 100 meters away from this Nimai tree. This is the temple constructed by a Gaudiyama temple constructed by Saraswati Thakur himself. And to my knowledge, this is the only place where there is Nashinga Dev deity. Shri Prabhupada also in the beginning, like Bhaktivinoda Thakur doesn't speak about Nashinga Dev, but because uh, uh, in the construction of Yoga Peet and Gaudiya Mat here, Saraswati Thakur was facing a lot of difficulties. So in order to remove the obstacles, he installed Nashinga Dev deity and then no more obstacles appear from then onwards. There is Pralada and Nashinga Dev. Otherwise, to my knowledge, there is no other Gaudiya Mat where there is Nashinga Dev deity. Then Shila Prabhupada also had Nashinga Dev deity in few of his temples. Like New Vrindavan has, I think in US only New Vrindavan has. Maybe some other temple has, I am not aware. Then the Saraswati Thakur, as we see, he installed Gaur Gadadar. There are many Gaudiyamats in Navadip area, at least like over 10 Gaudiyamat. But we will see our Iskon temple is really big. It is the headquarters in Mayapur. Mm. Mm. Our Iskon temple is like 50 times bigger than um, all the Gaudiyamats. Like it's so big. Buses goes inside the campus actually. To go from one place to another take like half an hour walk. Such big campus we have there. Then we also know Saraswati Thakur installed, he did not install Gaur Nitai, he installed Gaur Gadadhar. But Prabhupada says Gaur Gadadhar worship is on a, state, on a state of rag. And people, when he came to America, people were not qualified for such high worship. And that's why there is uh, um, uh, Gaur Nitai worship. Okay, then, <clears throat> then just in front of uh, Sachi Mata delivery room, there is uh, Gaurakund. There's something about Gaurakund. In Vrindavan, Sri Radha Kund and Sri Shama Kund are supremely glorious. Similarly, in Navadweep, which is not different from Vrindavan, Sri Gaurakund in Mayapur is matchlessly glorious. Mm. In a way, the most glorious Kund in the entire Antadweep area is Gaurakund. The devotees of Sri Gaurasundar bathe and perform Achman in this pond, and thus they taste the sweetness of Sri Radha Krishna's mercy. Many exalted personalities, expert in bhajan, perform their worship here. It's a huge kund, just in front, and behind you see is um, the temple. So there is uh, um, the red building you see, it's just a hall, basically, where this is a Gaudiyamat, this is owned by a Gaudiyamat. Previously, Srila Prabhupada wanted to uh, have a place here for uh, um, ISKCON devotees in yoga feet. Um, but the in charge of Gauriam at that point of time, he was not much favorable to have Westerners coming and staying and um, dividing Gauriam between ISKCON and them. So then Prabhupada bought his own big area just one mile away from here. And now we have our um, Radha Madhavastra Sakis there. This is Mahaprabhu Ghat. Mahaprabhu Ghat was situated uh, near the Yoga Peet. This Mahaprabhu Gaurakund is just the pond there. And Mahaprabhu Ghat is uh, on the bank of Ganga. Was situated near the Yoga Peet. These Ghats no longer exist, having been submerged by the Ganga. Here Nimai, as a young boy and as a scholar, used to bathe in the Ganga and perform water sports in Mahaprabhu Ghat. But we don't have them now. So, <clears throat> I'm now going to Jagai Madai Ghat. Jagai Madai Ghat was near Jagannath Mishra's house in Mayapur. Mm, Jagannath Mishra's house is the same as Yoga Peet. Jagannath Mishra's house also has the deity of, uh, um, I think it is Shaligram Shila that Jagannath Mishra used to worship. 
so when i mean after mahaprabhu's departure just like dwarka the entire ganga was covered and mahaprabhu told that predicted ganga will cover the entire dham and after 100 years it will uncover again so after 100 years when it was uncovered then or after maybe around 200 years then bhakti vinod thakur came and um, established all the places and as he was trying to find the um, house of lord chaitanya he was inspired in a particular place that this is the yoga peat and we know tulsi was growing there uh, how jagannath babaji maharaj came from kola dweep here by crossing the ganga um, and next to it uh, because um, the delivery room is not a part of the house generally in the ancient culture so bhakti Anand thakur was trying to make a house for jagannath mishra and when he was digging the area there he found nashinga uh, shaligram shila which was worshipped by jagannath mishra so that was a proof because when everything was submerged everything went inside ganga right way deep uh, in the mud so during the excavation when it was found that was another proof that this is the house of jagannath mishra and this is the yoga peak where mahaprabhu appeared so that is jagannath mishra house so when we go there we will see the delivery room we will see the shaligram shila of jagannath mishra we will see Gopeshwar Mahadev or Chetrapal Mahadev. Then behind the temple, we will see Gaur Gadadhar and Narsimhadev. And we will see Gaurakund there. And probably a few meters from there was Mahaprabhu Ghar Ganga used to flow there. Um, no more existing. Little bit, maybe one mile from there, there is Jagai Madai Ghat or sometimes it is called only Madai Ghat. Near Jagannath Mishra's house in Mayapur and Mahaprabhu would go from here. We will discuss next week there is um, the house of Advaita Charya, Gadadar Pandit, Srivas Thakur. Um, so from here all these and um, like Mahaprabhu and his associates will go um, to uh, Nagariya Ghat and to Ganga Nagar. Um, chanting the holy names and Jagai Madhai would be like right in the middle as we saw very close is Madhai Ghat and they would see all of them but they would just make fun of them <coughs> always drunk intoxicated <coughs> but they would not offend but they would just make jokes sometimes here and there that's how they, they got they heard a lot of holy names from the Lord himself but Mahaprabhu never cared about them until uh, Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas Thakur. Nityananda Prabhu also would stay just a few meters from here is the house of Shiva Thakur. They are very close. So Nityananda Prabhu would stay there and uh, Nimai Pandit would stay here. That's how we see Advaita Charya. They are so close you won't even believe like just few steps actually. So we see um, Nimai would, uh, Nimai Sachi Mata would ask Nimai go and get Vishwarup. Um, he has been in the house of Advaita Charya since uh, morning. And Advaita Charya would discuss Shiman Bhagavatam. And then and Nimai would just run, get Vishwaru, mother is calling, and he would come back. Then he would take his meal very close, all of them. Jagai Madai Ghat was near Jagannath Mishra's house in Mayapur on the bank of Ganga by the mercy of Shiman Mahaprabhu. Shri Madhai used to clean this ghat with his own hands. Shiman Mahaprabhu had pointed the exalted, has appointed the exalted Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas Thakur to go throughout the town to propagate Nam Prema, transcendental love for Krishna through chanting the holy name. They both considered Jagai and Madhai to be the most suitable candidate for receiving Nam Prema and they asked them to chant the holy name. But the brothers were completely intoxicated on wine. Madhai took a piece of broken earthen wine pot and threw it at Nityananda Prabhu's head, making it bleed. Haridas Thakur reported this unfortunate incident to Shiman Mahaprabhu. It's very close, actually. You, you run a few minutes and you are with Mahaprabhu there. So Haridas Thakur immediately ran and reported to Mahaprabhu, who enraged, went there with all his associates, raising his hand above his head. He summoned his disc weapon, crying chakra chakra. The sight of the transcendental disc weapon in the hand of Mahaprabhu made Jagai and Madai tremble in fear. This melted the heart of the most compassionate Shri Nityananda Prabhu, who grasped Mahaprabhu's hand and said, 
The purpose of your appearance in this incarnation is to distribute love of God. It is therefore not fitting for you to kill someone. Instead, it is appropriate for you to purify a person's heart by giving him prema. Jagai it prevented Madhai from striking me a second time. So please be merciful unto him. Mahaprabhu embraced Jagai, who fainted in ecstasy. Then he placed his feet on Jagai's chest. Jagai began to weep and chant Krishna, Krishna. Seeing this, Madhai fell at the feet of Nityananda Prabhu, begging for forgiveness. And Mahaprabhu bestowed prema upon him also. Madhai, he was repentant, asked Nityananda Prabhu how he could become free from his former sin of killing various living entities. And Nityananda Prabhu instructed him to tend to the maintenance of this cup. Um, so then they constructed the ghat. I mean, made it like stepwise. And every day they used to clean the ghat. And it is said that anybody who go and bathe in this ghat will become free from offenses. This was the mercy of... Um, Nityananda Prabhu gave this mercy to Madhai. He told him that rendering service to the Ganga would remove his offenses. On the order of Nityananda Prabhu, Madhai performed this service for the rest of his life. And in this way, took the dust of Vaishnava's feet. He built steps at this ghat and with his own hand and also cleaned them daily. So this is like you see on the left, there are some devotees playing at Madhai Ghat. Now naturally Ganga has changed its course. Just like when you go to Vrindavan, you go to Kaliya Ghat and there is no Yamuna layer. So likewise, it is it has become so much disappeared that unless we are with somebody who exactly knows the location, we won't even know where is Madhai Ghat. The picture on the right is what they say is Madhai Ghat today. Completely obscured basically. When last time I, I went and I wanted to go, everybody said it disappeared and so I could not go to this place. But it seemed like uh, maybe 10-15 years back, there used to be something there. But it is further, Ganga is further changing course, so a little bit further is the Ganges now. So this was about Madhai Ghat. As we see, this is Yoga Peet, and the first square we see here on Bhagirati Ganga is Madhai Ghat, the closest. And then we go to next one. Yeah, it's called Barakona Ghat. In his youth, Nimai Pandit used to teach Sanskrit grammar to students in his own school. After class, he would discuss the scriptures with his students at Barakona Ghat, like we see. So, Nimai school actually was in his own home. And that's where all the students would come and he would teach. And Nimai was only 11 years old that time. Then he would take all the students and there's a picture you see. There is a ghat here, beautiful Ganga. And this is where Mahaprabhu would come with all the students. After class, he would discuss the scriptures with his students at this ghat, Bara Kona ghat. Once the eminent Keshav Kashmiri Adik Vijay Pandit from Kashmir arrived there with hundreds of his disciples. Keshav Kashmiri was famous for having defeated brilliant scholars all over India. In East India, Navadip was known as an important center of learning where the Vedas, Upanishads, Smritis, Puranas and the six systems of Indian philosophy, especially Nav, Navinyaya, a new kind of logic was taught. People came from great distances to study here. Navadip was the seat of learning. Keshav Kashmiri had received the blessings of Saraswati, the goddess of learning. He was especially gifted in composing highly ornamented poetry, and in a moment, hundreds of original Sanskrit verses would issue forth from his mouth in an unbroken stream. He could defeat the most prominent scholars with his brilliant speech, which revealed his great expertise in logic and other talents. When therefore he arrived in the town of Navadri, he very proudly declared that any of the scholars there should come forward to debate with him. 
otherwise they should write a letter declaring his victory over them but no scholar came forward these scholars were all envious of me my pandit and with great cunning they told keshav kashmiri the boy nimai pandit is now the most insignificant scholar first debate with him and then you can debate with us it was dusk like the evening time as you see in the picture also and as the sun set into the ganga its red rays playfully danced on her waves like orange is reddish the brilliant nimai pandit sat on the bank of the ganga amongst a group of students teaching them sanskrit grammar the sky was reddish as if filled with anurag and the atmosphere was serene very peaceful seeing the students keshav kashmiri intoxicated with pride came over to them nimai sweet voice was speaking excellent and logical statements on grammar and navya nyaya nyaya means logic thus revealing his extraordinary brilliance mapro was speaking these verses at that time it was a evening time keshav kashmiri came in a very proud mood this attracted keshav kashmiri who sat down amongst them thus making some of the boys quite nervous he came with the whole team keshav kashmiri asked one boy what is the student's name who was speaking the boy replied he is our nimai pandit merely hearing his name filled keshav kashmiri with fear when he heard nimai pandit he became afraid one of the boys whispered into nimai's ear this is keshav kashmiri nimai pandit turned to keshav kashmiri and spoke respectfully it is our good fortune that today you have come into our midst we have heard of your glories please recite something for us keshav kashmiri asked what subject matter would you like to hear about nimai replied we would like to hear shri bhagavati bhagirathi's glories from your lips keshav kashmiri immediately began reciting a shower of freshly composed verses adorned with alliteration and other literary ornaments the students were stunned nimai pandit then asked him to select just one of the verses he had recited and to describe its virtues and faults keshav kashmiri asked which verse would you like me to describe nimai pandit immediately chose a verse from the middle of the poem seeing nimai's capacity to hear something and at once commit it to memory keshav kashmiri was struck with wonder and trembled within nonetheless out of pride he answered in keshav kashmiri's composition there is never any fault he pointed out the verses five virtues in regard to alliteration and he also pointed out other literary ornaments like how great my poetry is he was glorifying himself nimai pandit with humility and gravity then pointed out five more virtues when he further pointed out five five faults everyone was astounded his pride crushed and unable to respond the defeated keshav kashmiri returned to his quarters that night it was anyways dusk it became night so he went back that night mother saraswati consoled him saying the person who defeated you is my master the supreme lord shri krishna himself you are highly fortunate to have received his darshan fall at his feet and beg forgiveness early the next morning keshav kashmiri met nimai pandit and fell at his feet begging forgiveness nimai pandit instructed the purpose of scholarship is not to defeat others its only purpose is to worship krishna go to vraja and worship him with a simple heart keshav kashmiri offered his obeisances and to nimai pandit and left and it is said even the samadhi of keshav kashmiri is in the um vrindavan i'm not sure much i don't know much about that though. then we come to the next place after madhai ghat there is uh, uh, barakona ghat where um, mahaprabhu would speak sanskrit verses to his students in a very serene atmosphere 
and Keshav Kashmiri challenged and was defeated there. Then the next is Nagariya Ghat. Ten yards north of Barakona Ghat at nearby Ganga Nagar was Sri Ganga Das Pandit Sanskrit School in which uh, Nimai mm -hmm. studied with other boys. So first Nimai would go to the school of Ganga Das Pandit. And after some time when Ganga Das Pandit was very pleased with him with the blessings of Ganga Das Pandit, then Nimai started his own school in his, in his home. So this happens here. Ten yards north of Barakona Ghat at nearby Ganga Nagar was Sri Ganga Das Pandit Sanskrit school in which Nimai studied with the other boys. And you see here from Madai Ghat there is Barakona Ghat and ten yards away from there is Nagariya Ghat and then little bit further is Ganga Nagar. Ganga Nagar was like the downtown area in our worlds or the central place or the marketplace. Lot of Chahal Pahal there. So this is many, many pastimes at Nagariya Ghat on the way home from school. Nimai would stop by Nagariya Ghat and tell the young girls to worship him. He blessed the girls who worshipped his feet with their future husbands would be handsome, pleasant, wealthy and respected. And he threatened the others with husbands that would be crippled and poor and old and would have each would have five wives already. So in a way, all these uh, childhood pastimes of Nimai would happen at Nagariya Ghat. They are all close by. Sometimes while taking bath in the Ganga, he would splash water on the Brahmanas who were reciting mantras and offering water to the sun. And when they angrily rebuked him, he took water in his mouth and sprayed them with it. So he would splash water when Brahmanas were chanting mantras and offering water to the sun. And when they were like, what are you doing? Then he would take water, Ganga water in his mouth and put water on their faces. I mean, he has many naughty pastimes in Nagariya. But there is another pastime that devotees may have heard. He and his, uh, I mean, so th this is where they would study. Very close by from here, they would study. But many times, Nimai would not go to the school and he would just play in this Nagariya Ghat. Um, and whole day, he would um, like <clears throat> play with the Brahmanas and the young girls there and create havoc in the whole Ghat. Very mischievous. And then in the evening, he would go away and all of them would go to Jagannath Mishra's home to complain. And this is also where... Um, Nimai and all his um, friends, they saw many puppies, dog children, many puppies playing by. So uh, Nimai asked everybody, which of the puppy do you like the most? And they found one puppy. And Nimai took the puppy and he said, okay, this puppy I will take home. Then all the other boys said, well, you took the most attractive puppy with you. So Nimai said, uh, don't worry, we all will play together. And then Nimai took the puppy with all his friends and they took to Sachi Mata's home. Sachi Mata was angry. There are many pastimes here. Um, Sachi Mata would come and grab Nimai from here and he would go and sit um, on the pot which is uh, like the uh, thrown out cooked pots. Mahaprabhu would sit there. Um, and he also taught the, the philosophy of uh, impersonalism versus personalism to Mother Sachi. Then and um, regarding the puppy, uh, Sachi Mata said, yeah, I will take care of your puppy. That's okay. First, Sachi Mata said, no, you are a Brahmana in Brahmana's home. Dogs are considered uh, um, impure. So you cannot have puppy here. Um, this is our culture. This is against our culture. And I said, no, no, no. I want this puppy. I want this puppy. Then uh, she said, okay, first of all, you have played a lot in the mud and you, have, you are covered all over. Quickly go take bath in Ganga and come back and take some. I have made some sandesh. Um, and some other sweets for you, some very nice prasadam for you, come quickly. So Nimai went and the, the friends told Nimai that actually I saw Mother Sachi releasing the puppy and the puppy ran away. So Nimai became a little bit unhappy, angry. So Nimai went and Nimai asked Sachi Mata 
the puppy was not there. Nimaya Sachi Mata, where is the puppy? So Sachi Mata said, I don't know. It must be here only. I didn't do anything. So Nimaya said, no, 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 you free him up. So she said, no, I did not do anything. I don't know where the puppy is. <clears throat> and then uh, Nimaya said, no, first puppy. Then I will, then otherwise I will not talk to you. The mother Sachi said, all right, it is already late. First you take Prashad and uh, take some rest. In the meantime, I will go and search puppy. So Nimai said, all right. Then he took Prashad, he took rest and mother Sachi was there only. <laughs> she didn't do anything. <clears throat> but the next day it was seen that uh, the puppy was found in Ganganagar that we saw in the map. And uh, uh, Lochanda Sakura explains this. Um, and an uh, air airplane came from Vaikuntha Lok took the puppy, puppy took a 400 form and went back to court and in front of everybody. So how Nimai from his very childhood, he was sh showing his mercy to <clears throat> all living entities. And this is where he would play with the girls. They would come for worshipping and Nimai said, worship me. And uh, they would have some sandesh and some rasgulla, some laddu. So Nimai said, give me all this uh, sweets. So they said, ha, what are you doing? This is for worshipping Parvati and Shiv for a, for a beautiful husband. Uh, what are you saying, Nimai? Nimai said, give it to me. Otherwise, I will curse you that you will each uh, marry to a husband with five wives and the husband will be very old. Um, so they would become very scared and they said, no, no, Nimai, you take this Sandesh. Okay, and we'll worship you. So they will worship Nimai. Nimai would laugh and Nimai would go away. And then they would complain and Jagannath Mishra would come to this place. Uh, searching for Nimai and the students would say, hey, your father is coming. Then he would just go through the main road to Ganganagar um, right. and uh, um, pose himself as uh, coming directly from school. So there are many childhood pastimes. These are called uh, Balya Leela, one to five years. They all have this. They all happen in this Nagariya Ghat of Nimai. Then, angered upon hearing the complaints from the Brahmanas and the young girls, Jagannath Mishra went to the ghat with stick in hand, but he was unable to find Nimai because he had taken another path home. Nimai had told the boys to inform his father that he had gone straight from school. And this actually on the way, but he would not go to school, he would stay there only. And the whole day he would play with his friends. <laughs> but he was the best scholar anyways. Nimai smeared dust on his body and sprinkled it with drops of ink just to hide any indication that he might have bathed. I would love bathing in Ganga. Every day he would be like, just some of them are chanting mantras and he would go underneath the water and pull their um, dhoti apart and they would be like, hey, what is happening there? At another point of time, he would pull their leg and they would just, you know, it's Ganga flowing. So they just started flowing with the Ganga and just flow. And then they have to swim and come back. So he would create a lot of mischief and all of them were very happy because he was very beautiful. He was very um, lovable. Everybody loved him within their heart, just like Lord Krishna stealing butter. So he has his own pastimes here. Um, mis little mischievous and naughty pastimes. When Jagannath Mishra arrived at house, he saw dust and ink on Nimai's body and an expression of pure innocence on his face and he did not say a word. So when Shaka man, Nimai like <laughs> it's such innocence. Jagannath Mishra would think like, yeah, actually he's coming from the school only. Just like Mother Yeshoda. It was at Nagariya Ghat that Sri Sachi Devi first saw Vishnu Priya and selected her to be Nimai's bride. When she came, she saw a beautiful girl and she immediately developed a desire my Nimai should marry her. Um, and later on, there is a whole past time how she had a middleman. I don't remember his name, who arranged, talked to Vishnu Priya's father. And there was a huge marriage, like very opulent marriage. Such a, uh, Vishnu Priya's um, father was very rich. So a uh, huge feast was arranged. Uh, Krishna's Kavirat Goswami also describes a little bit. Chaitanya Bhagavad describes in more detail the marriage. So this is where Mother Sachi saw that beautiful girl. Then on the day of Kazi, on the day the Kazi was subdued, Shiman Mahaprabhu came here with a huge Sankirtan party and chanted for some time in Nagariya Ghat. And if you see the house of Chan Kazi is also very close. So this is all like, you know, like 
uh, childhood pastimes of Nimai, and even when he was growing up, the whole time, um, even when um, Mahaprabhu became a devotee, when he came back from Gaya, all these pastimes happened here. In this basically two miles area, and that's the reason Mahaprabhu is also called Nadia Bihari Gaurahari. Nadia Bihari means he is doing Vihari Nadia. Vihar means just raising his hands, going along the streets of Nadia and chanting the holy names. Even when we are going in autos, when we are walking, <clears throat> we can have in our consciousness that uh, uh, um, that Mahaprabhu with all his associates, with Advaita Acharya, Shivas Thakur, Nityananda Prabhu, um, Haridas Thakur, they all would walk on these streets. Every single place there is a pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Although very few pastimes are manifest today. We will go only for five places, but the place itself is very empowered. Or uh, the place itself has a lot of mercy. So that's why, I mean, during our uh, training uh, that, that I personally took with uh, Sagar Maharaj, every day we would go on this path with uh, Mridanga and Kartals and we would walk um, and uh, uh, Maharaj requested us to think how Nimai would perform Sankirtan throughout this area, public Sankirtan. Naturally, first public Sankirtan was uh, um, Chan Kazi time or when Chan Kazi create uh, troubles. But after that, there was a regular Sankirtan out and all these devotees would go out in this area on the bank of Ganga we also took a boat in Ganga and then because it is said that now Ganga Nagar and these guards, some of these guards are like Ganga Nagar especially it is specifically mentioned. It is under Mother Ganga now. So um, some places are manifest and some are just still submerged within Ganges. So uh, Sagar Maharaj would, would take us on a boat and on a boat we go far like at least half an hour far and uh, there was a kirtan on the boat and then just two hours we would just keep on going going because every place there is where Mahaprabhu used to take his bath or all these pastimes it is like this area like full of pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and that's why it's under deep or the whole or the most important section or part of Navadweep on the day the Kazi was subdued, Shivan Mahaprabhu came here with a huge Sankirtan party. They said Nagariya Ghat. And Nagar means, Nagariya Ghat means the whole Nagar would come here. Or all the people would come here. It is the most famous Ghat in a way to say. Madai Ghat is nobody would go there because um, um, they were very sinful and everybody wanted to stay away from them. And then we saw Baragona Ghat. It's like just Nimai would sit with his, Nimai Pandit would sit with his students. It's a serene place, like, you know, some, some like, peaceful. Um, you are alone, there is privacy. Mm. Then Nagariya Ghat is like uh, thousands. All the people would come here for worship. It's like in those who are in uh, Michigan, you know, we have some very famous places like the Grand Heaven Beach and other places. Everybody would go there. That's like Nagariya Ghat. So Mahaprabhu also, um, because uh, before going to Chan Kazi, Mahaprabhu collected all the devotees. It is said that millions of, of them joined. Demigods descended that time. So Nagariya Ghat is the place because everybody would be there, generally. So on the day of Kazi, on the day the Kazi was subdued, Shivan Mahaprabhu came here with a huge Sankirtan party and chanted for some time, then carrying burning torches, mashal, and performing Kirtan with Medangas and Kartals, the party went to Chan Kazi's residence in uh, Simulia Gram. Simulia Gram is the place where there is a house of Chan Kazi. We saw in a map. It's also close by. And then, as you see again, there is a Chan Kazi's house. You see in the map. Um, you see there is Ganga Naga. This is the last place we will discuss. Quick shot. Before that, there is Nagariya Ghat, very famous Ghat. Then there is Barakona Ghat, there is Madai Ghat, there is Yoga Peet. So these are some of the places. Today, Ganga Nagar is covered by the Ganga. 
Here, Navadeep's famous scholar Sri Ganga Das Pandit has a school where young Nimaya as a boy completed his studies in grammar. So this is just close to Ganga Nagar, is Nagariya Ghat. So he would not go to school, go to Tilda Ghat and come back from there. Through the path, like Ganga Nagar is, uh, as I said, it's a marketplace. And there's a main road that goes to Yoga Peet. As you see, they're all close. Like Ganga Nagar to Yoga Peet, you can go uh, 15 minutes walk. And... Uh, uh, there is a main road and there is a path that goes around the ghat. So that's how. So Ganga Nagar is covered by Ganga. Ganga Das Pandit School, very famous school, was in Ganga Nagar where Nima used to complete his studies in Sanskrit grammar. Nima then opened a school in his own home. Ganga Das, who was Sandipani Muni in Krishna's pastime, greatly honored Nima. All the students would come to our yoga peak to study from Nimai Pandit. Upon returning from Gaya, Nimai was absorbed in Krishna Prema. Nimai the teacher had become Nimai the devotee and he gave up teaching. When Nimai students complained to Pandit Ganga Das about this, so all the students who would go to Nimai's home for study, they would went to Ganga Nagar and inform Ganga Das Pandit that Nima is no more um, teaching grammar. He is only speaking about Krishna. When Nimai student complained to Pandit Ganga Das about this, he showed them mercy by presenting to Bhavuka Nimai many logical arguments why he should resume his teaching. So Ganga Das Pandit then spoke to Nimai and he told Nimai that uh, um, why don't you resume? All the students are very eager and uh, you are doing so much service by teaching them grammar. Nimai Pandit complied to his instruction because Ganga Das Pandit was his teacher. Nimai Pandit said, all right. But now he revealed every syllable and aphorism as a manifestation of Sri Shama Sundar Krishna who attacks the entire universe. First, he would not teach. Then Ganga Das Pandit requested him. He said, all right. Then he would teach and every word he would teach with respect to every syllable and aphorism is a manifestation of Shams and the Krishna. Before his students' very eyes, he would glorify Krishna's pastimes and become immersed in ecstasy. And upon coming to external consciousness, tears would flow from his eyes and his voice would choke up and he could not speak. All he could say, I can no longer teach grammar that is devoid of devotion to Krishna. He then absorbed himself in Kirtan, accompanied by his students. Then he would tell his students, let's do Kirtan. They were like, okay, now he is our teacher, what can we do? He is not teaching grammar, he is only speaking about Krishna. So they would do Kirtan and they all became very much attracted to it, naturally. Who abandoned their studies to join him. They also gave up their grammar and education and they all would come to Nimai's home and do Kirtan only. Oh, uh, yeah, I think this is something... This is the last slide here. Yeah. So this we will continue um, next week, which is Shivas Angan. This place is situated about 200 yards north of Yoga Peet. Here in the extensive courtyard of Shivas Pandit's house, Mahaprabhu used to perform Harinam Sankirtan together with his associates. Mm -hmm. This is this is the deity there. There is Panchitattva and some other associates. There is also a broken Mridanga here. So, indicating two pastimes. One is Chan Kazi coming here and creating havoc. And another is uh, Mahaprabhu whole night Kirtan would happen in this Shivas Angan. And those devotees who go there, you pay them 50 rupees, 100 rupees, 1 to dollars and they will give you a lot of kaja and a lot of sweets. So, devotees go and get a uh, lot of sweets from here. Okay, so that's all we have for today. Any discussion? Prabhuji, there is a Vaishnava song, Nadiya Godrum and Nityananda Mahajan. Is there any relation with Godrum Dweep and Nityananda Prabhu, any pastime or any reference with that bhajan? Yes. So Nityananda Prabhu opened his uh, um, headquarters in Godrum Dweep. And in Godrum Dweep, there is a place called Surabhi Kunj, which was actually headquarters of Nitai. And from there, 
that's why nadia godru mein netanand in nadia which is navadweep in godru netanda prabhu has opened a marketplace and selling the holy name yeah there's a song surabi kund de chinami hatte in surabi kund he has opened a nama hatta okay okay thank you okay so i guess we will end here and i hope this is helpful <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much.